Welcome to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. Today I'd like to talk about meth addiction and a method that I use to help a man with a meth addiction. Now, first of all, when we look at meth, we need to look at what its botanical root is. Obviously, they make it a synthetic, but if you look at what it's based on, it's based on an herb called Herba ephedra. This in Chinese is called Ma Huang. Now, this herb was used traditionally for asthma as well as uh, respiratory illnesses in general. It's used quite a bit for the common cold and for immune disorders that may be causing pain and arthritis. Generally, this herb will cause rapid heart rate, perspiration, and urination. What's really incredible about this plant as a whole is that the upper part of the plant, the leaves and stems, have the opposite effect as the roots. So what's above the ground will cause the sweating and rapid heart rate. However, the roots of this plant stop sweating. They stop urination and they stop the rapid heart rate. They tend to slow the heart rate down. So this is an interesting phenomena that the top of the plant can have opposite effects as those you know that are at the bottom, the roots. So this is often misused. People use it for weight loss, which can cause disastrous effects for the heart. People have died that way. And it's also used with the production of meth. And meth really mimics and kind of amplifies the effects of mahua. That's not to say you should use meth for asthma or something like that. It's obviously a really bad idea. It rapidly pushes chi up and out and leaves people pretty empty inside, which has a whole host of side effects that you can literally see someone aging. If you look at um, look online for faces of meth, you can see somebody in the period of a six-month to a year period of time. You can see them essentially just aging and dying in front of you. One day in Eugene, Oregon, a man walked into my clinic and said he was addicted to meth, and he asked if I could help him. I said that I didn't know for sure, but the drug he was using was based on Ma Huang, so I would see what I could do. Now, there is a lot of literature over the last 2,000 years, as well as modern research, that shows that when people have an overdose of Ma Huang, they've taken too much, the sweating won't stop, they're rescued by using the root, which is called Ma Huang Gun. Gun means root. So I took a bunch of this Ma Huang Gun, and I gave it to him. So this is the traditional antidote for ephedra abuse. I figured it's theoretical, it's in the same ballpark, let's give it a try. He thanked me up and down and said he had no money, but he would come back on payday and, you know, give me something. Of course, I didn't expect to ever see this guy again. I just, for my, really for my own benefit, I wanted to give him something, you know, so that if somebody comes to me with help and, you know, they're saying uh, potentially their life is on the line, they you do what you can for them. I didn't charge him anything because it's not something I knew would work. It's very theoretical, of course. But the next week he came back. And he said that his cravings were cut in half, and he gave me five to ten bucks. And I was kind of blown away, but then he was in a rush and had to go off somewhere else. The next week he came back and said his cravings were still reduced, and he gave me twenty. I gave him more of the Ma Huang gun. And keep in mind that there was no fee schedule signed or any kind of agreement in place. I just gave him the herbs, and he came back, and I gave him more. Eventually, his cravings were reduced to the point that he got a job doing construction. And at this point, he was down to using meth once or twice a week. He kept going like this, and as he got cleaner and was able to have a job and an apartment and internet hookup, I connected him with an online supplier for direct access to Ma Huang Gun. For the next six months, he would come in every so often and drop off some money just to say thank you. Eventually, he moved back east so he could work on his family business. I don't know if it was enough for his meth addiction, but I thought it was notable enough to look into deeper. Meth is a drug that's often used by people in lower socioeconomic classes. It's very cheap to get. Mahuangan, as an herb, is also very cheap, and this is because 
the top part of the plant is used extensively in the Chinese botanical pharmaceutical industry. The roots of it are very seldomly used, so as a result, they're really cheap, just supply and demand. I can't say that ma huang gun is definitively the answer for meth addiction, but it is a concept rooted in tradition with at least some pharmacology to shine light on a plausible mechanism. I think it's potentially a good pattern to erupt, and then afterwards it's good to look at some of the underlying orexins, HPA axis, this kind of thing. But for this man, it was very pivotal in changing his life and his life story about himself. Was he just a junkie or was he someone who had overdosed on a substance that could be kept into check and brought back into alignment by using the antidote? With most addictions, what you find is an elevation of nitric oxide, this inflammatory molecules that are very important for intracellular communication, but when you get too many of them in one place, it can cause damage. You also tend to find a deficiency or a suppression of hydrogen sulfide. These are very important for your body's endogenous antioxidants. So basically with addiction, the body becomes on fire. You can think of it, it's rusting and the body isn't able to keep it in check. Mahuang is necessarily an oxidant. It's going to increase nitric oxide to help kill off some of the bacteria and fungi that may be attacking that can be leading to these sort of joint pains or asthma or upper respiratory type conditions. Mahuang gun as its antidote is uh, reducing the inflammation and has more of an antioxidant effect. So looking at the way that meth and other types of addictions are influencing the body, we can look at the very basic level, the relationship between oxidation and antioxidation. And then when it comes to meth addiction in particular, it was looking at the nature of ma huang and the way that ma huang gun uses some of the same pathways, but uh, reverses them. So theoretical, of course, but if ma huang and its constituents like uh, ephedra and pseudoephedra that go into drugs like pseudoephed can be made into meth, then is it possible that ma huang gun, the antidote to ma huang, if it's not enough by itself, could at least provide us with the pathway to create a true antidote for methamphetamine addiction? I think it's very plausible. It's one of the best guesses that we have. And so I thought I would just record this and put this out in the off chance that somebody who researches or you know, looks into this further may be able to take it and run with it. And if somebody at home is struggling with a methamphetamine addiction or has a family member who is also, this may be something to bring up with their doctor, with their acupuncturist, and see if it's appropriate for them. For this one case, it seemed to have a very good effect, so I thought I would at least share that and see what could become of it in the long run. If you'd like to receive an email from me on the show content, references, and contact information for our amazing guests, then you'll want to go to botanicalbiohacking.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. There you can sign up for our email, like our Facebook page, and rate us on Stitcher or iTunes, all in one convenient location. Thanks again for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Miles.